Hello everyone, it's Carmony here from Long Game Health. Welcome back to the channel. I am back with a nutrient focused video today and we are beginning our journey into the B vitamins. Now many people know of vitamin B as being important for energy levels and yes, that's true, but that is just the tip of the iceberg because vitamin B is actually a group of vitamins and this group is actually known as the vitamin B complex. And there are eight of them in total. Here is a list. And it's the combination of all of these working together that give us the overall effects of vitamin B. So today I'm actually going to start with vitamin B3 because this was a topic that was requested by a lovely viewer. If you have any topics that you would like me to cover in a future video, just let me know and I will do my best. So today I will be going through the main things that you need to know about vitamin b3 what it is why you need it and where to find it so let's just get into it So vitamin B3 is also known as niacin and as I said before it is one of eight B group vitamins. So when it comes to vitamins we have water or fat soluble vitamins and all of the B vitamins including B3 are water soluble which means they are quite easily dissolved in the water that's found in food and also in digestive juices. This makes it easy to absorb them and they can freely move around the body inside your blood. But the main thing to remember about water soluble vitamins is that they don't really have a proper storage system in your body and so any extra amount that you have in your body that isn't immediately able to be used up will be removed through your urine and you will essentially pee it out. So because you can't store them you need to make sure you are constantly getting enough of the vitamin through your diet otherwise you will become deficient. You can't just think oh yes I had plenty of vitamin b3 today I can forget about that for a couple of weeks. No it's a daily challenge. So before we get into what we need vitamin b3 for we need to go through the different forms because there are actually three forms that vitamin b3 can be found in and they are niacin or nicotinic acid nicotinamide and nicotinamide riboside. Now each of these forms have their own pathways in the body to give their effects and they usually can't transform into each other. Niacin is the simplest and original form of vitamin B3. This is the form that is mainly used to deal with deficiencies. Nicotinamide is a more gentle form of vitamin B3 as it's thought to give less side effects. And this is the form that is mainly used in supplements and fortified foods because you tend to get a larger amount of the vitamin at once so you do want to reduce the risk of side effects when you do that. Now the last form, nicotinamide riboside, is a newer form that's recently been getting attention because of its potential to boost NAD levels. Now NAD is something that has recently been popping off in the longevity space and I will be talking more about this soon because vitamin B3 and NAD have a very close relationship but research is still ongoing with the third form which is nicotinamide riboside and its long-term benefits are still being investigated so it's one to just keep an eye on. So regardless of the form though vitamin B3's main function is to go through a conversion process and turn into two very important coenzymes in your body and these are NAD and NADP. These two coenzymes are crucial to some important processes in your body so let's go through them. The first and arguably the main role is in energy production. If you've watched some of my other videos, I have mentioned something called the electron transport chain. And this is basically a process that happens inside the mitochondria of each cell in your body. The end result of this process is something called ATP. This is how ATP gets made and ATP is the energy currency of your body. Without ATP you have no energy, you can't do anything, no processes, nothing. So NAD and NADP participate in this electron transport chain and they both will accept electrons and pass them along creating the conditions needed to make ATP. Now this is honestly a huge process and this is a very simplified way of explaining it. 
But I think what you need to know is that vitamin B3 turns into NAD and NADP. And these two are needed to make ATP or energy in the body. So this is why if you don't have enough vitamin B3, your energy levels can be low. NAD and NADP are also involved in DNA repair and maintenance of your cells. I won't go into this too much, but the energy that is stored inside NAD is used to power repair processes for DNA, and this fixes damage caused to DNA strands by things like UV radiation, toxins, and just natural wear and tear inside your body. And this is the main reason that NAD in particular has been getting lots of attention in the longevity space, because the thinking is that if you can repair this damage to DNA, you can in theory make your cells live longer and that means you slow down the aging process. But this is a bit of a new space and research is ongoing. Now in terms of cell maintenance, both NAD and NADP are involved in something known as autophagy. This is a process where damaged or unnecessary components of cells are recycled. And this prevents the buildup of harmful waste products in cells and this improves the health of your cells. This is another thing that people are focusing on with the whole longevity and anti-aging aspect of NAD and NADP. Vitamin B3 is also linked to brain health because NAD is actually essential for the production of neurotransmitters. Now these are chemical messengers that are needed for communication to happen between brain cells. Serotonin is an example of a neurotransmitter and so if you don't have enough vitamin B3, you may not have enough NAD levels in your body which may lead to memory problems and also mood disorders like depression and anxiety. NAD is also involved in repairing and maintaining the myelin sheath that covers nerve cells. Now this myelin sheath is very important for your nerves to send messages around. It impacts the speed at which messages are sent. So NAD helps to make sure your nerves are working as best as they can by maintaining this. Now you may have heard that vitamin B3 is also good for skin health and this is actually an area with a decent amount of research behind it. The NAD that vitamin B3 turns into has been found to stimulate collagen production and collagen is a protein that is responsible responsible for making your skin firm and elastic, which helps skin to fight off the effects of aging. And some studies have actually found that niacinamide can improve the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines because of this collagen aspect. This is actually why a lot of skin products these days have nicotinamide in them, which is essentially just vitamin B3. Niacin is also helpful because it helps the cells of the outermost layer of your skin multiply and this strengthens the skin barrier, protecting it from environmental damage like UV radiation from the sun, pollutants, and also dryness. Now, finally, I just want to touch on vitamin B3 and cholesterol levels because niacin, one of the three main forms of vitamin B3, has actually been found to be able to trigger the liver to produce more HDL, which if you remember from my past videos is the good type of cholesterol and we want it to be higher because it takes cholesterol away from the arteries to the liver for processing. This reduces any buildup of cholesterol in arteries and reduces risk of heart disease. Now, how niacin does this isn't actually properly understood. It seems like it is something that researchers have noticed. But either way, benefits to cholesterol is just a happy coincidence. So as you can see, the many benefits that vitamin B3 can give you come mainly because of the fact that it turns into NAD or NADP. The next thing you probably need to know is where to find vitamin B3. Well, ideally it will come from your diet and it is found in a variety of foods. Meat such as beef and chicken are good sources, as well as seafood like tuna and salmon. I do have a bit of a list for you with some foods that have good amounts of vitamin B3. And there's also non-meat sources like mushrooms, peanuts, beans, and chickpeas as well. But from these examples, you may notice that vitamin B3 isn't found as much in fruits and vegetables. The forms of vitamin B3 found in most food are niacin and nicotinamide. Now, for those of you who struggle to get enough from these foods, there are fortified foods, which are just foods that have extra vitamin B3 put into them to help people reach the daily required intakes. Many breakfast cereals, breads, and other grain products tend to do this. So have a look at the nutritional information panel to just double check. So how much do you actually need then? Well, this is from the Australian Nutrient Reference Values website, and it shows 
shows that the recommended daily intake for men over 18 is 16 milligrams a day while women need a little less at 14 milligrams a day. But just for reference, 85 grams of chicken breast has 11.4 milligrams. So I think that if you have a pretty well balanced diet with food from a wide variety of food groups, this isn't a very hard target to hit. But now of course, beyond food and even fortified foods, if you do really think you need a boost with vitamin B3 levels, there is always supplements. But deficiency in vitamin B3 is actually not very common in developed countries. And that is because countries like the US and Australia have fortification programs, which means that certain foods like grains and cereals will likely be fortified with extra vitamin B3. These are extremely common foods, so it makes sure that everyone is getting some vitamin B3 in their diets. What I am saying is do not take a supplement if you don't have to because there is such thing as too much niacin or vitamin B3. Some nutrients have something called an upper level of intake and this is essentially the amount of the nutrient that you can have each day that is considered safe. Anything higher than this level and you increase the risk of side effects. So for vitamin B3, this is actually 35 milligrams per day. So if you go beyond this, you risk experiencing skin flushing, which is the most common side effect of niacin. This causes redness, itching, and burning sensations to your skin, but it is usually harmless and more of an aesthetic issue. Nicotinamide, which is a different form of vitamin B3, is less likely to cause this issue, which is why many people prefer that form. Other issues may appear with too much vitamin B3 though, and that includes things like upset stomach, so nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. On the extreme end, if you really have too much vitamin B3, you could cause liver damage and also get gout attacks. So if you are someone who is susceptible to gout, avoid niacin niacin in supplements. Now, there is also some very new research that came out just in February of this year that seems to have found a link between high levels of niacin, which is one of the forms of vitamin B3, and heart disease. This is the study here, and essentially they are saying that when your body breaks down niacin to process it, you get some products called 2PY and 4PY. Don't really want to know the names of these. And they found that the more of these two there are in your blood, the risk of cardiovascular events go up because these two increase inflammation to blood vessels. They didn't actually give an amount of niacin that actually leads to this risk unfortunately and I do believe this is the first study to focus on it so we can't take it all as fact but it is something to keep an eye on and hopefully we can get some clearer information with some more research in the future. Now I will actually be leaving vitamin B3 supplements for another video though, because the area of vitamin B3 supplements also includes NAD supplements and there is a lot to unpack there in terms of evidence and research. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. I will wrap things up for now and hopefully you have a better understanding of what vitamin B3 is and why your body needs it. So this week, if you can, try to have a think about what you are consuming throughout the day and whether that is allowing you to get the amount of vitamin B3 that you need. As usual, if there's anything you want more information on, just leave a comment. If you learned something or just enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I put out a new video every Friday to help educate you on health in some way. See you next week and until then, keep playing the long game.